Hello, everybody. Um, hi, I am Sarah Felix, and I am a Hugo nominated and actually now Chesley nominated artist um, that is also the president of ASFA, the Association of Science Fiction and Fantasy Artists. And um, I've also created the Hugo bases a couple of times um, and worked on um, other bases for other awards as well. So I'm here to demonstrate my tiaras. And I've been doing this since the, well, my love of hats has been around for a long time. And so I uh, started actually making hats for my young daughters when they were just born. Sadly, making them get into <laughs> pictures and making, you know, uh, Valentine's hats and things like that. So it was, it was fun when when I had one and then the second one came along and they got more elaborate but during the pandemic I've um actually um started doing this I I must I'm like yeah okay I started doing this um as kind of a tiara tuesday thing and it was something that kind of kept my brain from focusing on too much doom scrolling as a lot of people and so I started creating tiaras every week and then people started asking me or telling me that they didn't have their own tiaras and so I created a giveaway on Constellation which is a Facebook group once a week that was a tiara giveaway for those who didn't actually have tiaras. Uh, so I, I, I can other people hear me? I don't know. I'm not muted. Mm -hmm. Oh, and hi. <laughs> um, so anyway, so I started giving away tiaras um, as well, and and it's been really fun, and it's it's kind of a exciting um, event every week. Keeps me very um, creatively challenged. My approach to tiaras is to really. Um, focus on using techniques that I've used in other projects. So I am a crafter, I'm an artist, so I tend to use all of those things. Um, polymer clay, I use resin, I, I use um, beads, I use a lot of different things. And <clears throat> I also tend to, um, okay, good. <laughs> I'm glad you can hear me. So <laughs> I also um, tend to use my stash, which as most crafters know, I have a huge stash of stuff in this room. That closet behind me, stash. That's my dragon hoard over there. So um, I wanted to show a couple of the tiaras um, and, and then also kind of walk through how I've made them. And then I'm going to kind of show you some of the other things that I use to come up with these ideas. So I've done this before with um, with the uh, with the with Conzeland. So I'm going to do a few different tiaras because we didn't we didn't show all of them. And of course, I've created new tiaras. But when I was doing the Conzeland tr um, tiara workshop, I actually came up with this idea, which was. Um, this tiara right here is a tiara that I just bought. And then I painted all of the crystals on this with alcohol ink. And what I did was I took a Q-tip with the ink and I just brushed it on. And this was the tiara I wore for the Hugo Awards um, when I was nominated. So... This is um, alcohol ink that is the Ranger ink that you get like in a craft store. I've got some right here, like this. Oh, so what is there a second window showing? I tech people. <laughs> um, so anyway, this is this is the tiara that I created. Uh, and so once with alcohol ink, when you do actually paint this, this is three layers of ink so that you get that shine. I actually rubbed a little bit of it off so that it kind of got into the crevices of it instead of just all over the surface. Cause I still wanted that, um, 
the crystal effect to come through. And then with alcohol ink, you tend to spray it with like a, a sealant. Um, I use a Kmar varnish and then a UV protectant because um, alcohol inks aren't the most light fast um, medium. So Sharon, I don't know, can you close that second window? I guess people are seeing a second window. And then, so I'll go on to another tiara. And then another tiara I did recently is this, um, there you go, butterfly tiara. And this one is actually just those butterflies that you get in the craft store, like I said, um, with some findings that are actually glued on right there. And then of course, crystals. And then to me, of course, every tiara should have a focal point at the top. So this is how I did it. This is like a gear type piece. And then of course, you've got to have sparkle on your tiara or it's not a tiara. So yeah, this is, this is it. So this one was a fun one. This was one of the original ones that I made and then I wanted it more bedazzled. So I actually took it apart and made a new one. Um, one of the fun ones that I've done recently, they're all fun, don't get me wrong, but is this Tiki, Tiki Tiara, this one right here. Oh, there you go. So this one is, um, these are polymer clay, these three figures, and they are, created and then I actually painted them copper so that they matched all the other pieces. And then um, these are of course findings as well. And then another piece on top. These of course were in my, is it a little dark? Let me see if I can lighten this a little bit. There you go. Um, these were in my, no, it's right in my eyes, in my stash. And then these of course are polymer clay as well. So I have a friend that uh, has a tiki bar and I thought this would be a cool gift. And then of course, because you know tiki is definitely um, related to the sea Polynesian type um, things, I thought the pearls on the bottom would fit that theme as well. And I really like this one. It's not, it's not too heavy, um, but it's definitely a piece right there. And then finally, the last, one that I did recently was this piece right here. So this one is findings. These are all just um, individual findings. Of course, these are findings as well. Um, they're wrapped around the base that we have here. And then these are antique, um, antique crystals that I got online. A lot of my stuff I get at on Etsy, I get it on Amazon. Um, I get them at craft stores. Like I said, I have a hoard and the hoard is um, definitely what it used. So this one was a hard one for me. For some reason that week I was having struggling and I started making this black tiara right here. And this one's all wire and I didn't like it. I just, I, I didn't like it. So. This also had the crystal piece on top that ended up on this one. So I took it apart <laughs> and I used all the pieces to make the one that I just showed you. But these are resin stars that I've um, made out of a mold, just a UV resin. And then of course, everything's wired together. So, so when I make my tiaras, typically I start with either a, um, a wire base like this so this right here, um, I don't know if the cam I should change cameras, but this piece right here is just a piece of metal that's a flattened five millimeter millimeter um, piece of metal that I can wrap into a base so that this is the shape. And then I wrap the corner so that you don't actually get it stuck in your hair. Um, I put a little glue on the end so that that little place also doesn't get stuck in your hair, but it this makes it really flexible. So when I actually want to change the size or fit it to my head, I can do that. And um, it is really easy for me to change it. But also you can use things like this, which is just a, a metal headband. 
Um, when I do them for other people, I typically use this because it's just a easier size. And it's also easier to create on because it doesn't move as much that the wiggle on that is a little harder to control. And so this, this piece, you can buy these everywhere. And I will say this a couple of times, I actually have a list of materials that I typically use for these. If you want to email me, it's uh, silly Sarah Sue at Gmail, and I can send you the list. Um, it's got where I've my favorite places to buy components and where I get these kinds of things, what kind of glue I use, because I get that question a lot. Um, and just general comments that I have about making tiaras. But these, these work really well and you can get these in different um, colors. I, I think I have them in gold, silver, black, um, and all different types of um, finishes. So, and, and people actually also just use regular like cloth headbands. The nice thing about the cloth headbands is when you wanna like hot glue something to it, it sticks to the cloth really well. Um, and so it's another way to do it. I just, I just like creating on a smaller piece and my stuff tends to be more delicate than what um, the big cloth, you have a lot more to cover on those. Um, and so these, these tend to work well for me. And then, like I said, I'm gonna change my camera view. Um, so here's my desk. I typically like to have a bunch of different things. Um, one of the things I'm working on right now is I got these great, um, they're flower petals or like, I guess, you know, leaf, leaf petals. And my camera is kind of making it a little bit buggy. There it goes. So these, these are leaf petals. They're great because they have the holes in the bottom so I can wire them on or I could cut these off and just glue them together. Um, this is also something I would use. This is like a pendant piece. Obviously they've got the holes here. So I would wire here and here and here. This is one of the ones I used for my New Zealand tiara that um, I've now sent away so I can't show it. Um, but these are really helpful and it gives you some height as well. So my idea for this was to use something like this but then to add these leaves in so you get, yeah, Kathleen, I um, I use a Kmar, it's C a K A M A R varnish. Um, and so it's 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 like a spray. Um, and then I then cover it in a UV protectant, which is also done by Kmar. It's just like called UV protectant. And so that way it keeps things from coming out. And um, Susan, I, I use for, if I'm doing it quickly, I'll just hot glue it and then come back later and then add a E6000. But um, typically if I want it to last or if I'm trying to sell it, I will use E6000. Um, also sometimes for speed and quickness, I will use a UV resin as a glue as well. So, Anyway, this is, this is kind of taking these pieces. I will wire them on. You get this kind of interesting, uh, see if you can see it. You get these now leaves and then you can add color, like I said, with the, um, with the alcohol inks into the leaves themselves. And then, you know, fi fix it with either UV resin or you can mix it into the resin and just paint it on. And so then you will get this green um, effect in here as well. Yes, we can put the glue names in the chat. We definitely can do that for you. Um, and then of course you need something, I, I, I like it. I like this the way it is, but for me, I would need something in the center to um, have a focal kind of right in here. And I got these, got this cool, I just got it to yesterday. These are another metal flower. So I'd probably put this here and then, you know, I don't know, maybe a crystal kind of right in the center. So you've got this really cool piece that's very natural. Um, and it gives you this really neat effect. So then of course I would want something on the outside to, you know, give the spikes as well. 
but this is one of the ways, this is probably one of the TRs that will be coming up soon so you can see it. So there you go. And also like if, you know, these, these are attached, these will be attached in these spots. So there probably would be crystals just in case there's things that are showing through that I don't want people to see. Um, but this is kind of an idea of one of the pieces I wanna do. Of course, I ordered like 20 more of these because I think it would be cool just to even have it just wrapped around um, a tiara base. So you get this kind of effect of, you know, this, this look right here and just a bunch of them with a bunch of flowers would be a really cool um, a way to do it as well. But another thing that I used with the, this piece right here was these are these bead caps and I flattened them out so that they are like this. And then I actually, a lot of times I will cut them off, but it, I also folded them around like that so that that went around this base right here like this and I pushed them all the way up so that you get a little bit more sturdiness. But then if I wanted a shorter amount, I could just cut it off and then glue it down as well. But these are really nice. I like this detail. I also like the fact, I think my other camera might be a little better. There, there's a circle in the center, so it's got a perfect place to put a crystal if you want to just add a crystal in there as well. So yeah, on Tuesday, if I'm creating this, I'm gonna wrap it around my base. I'm gonna hot glue it in place and then I'm gonna hot glue the crystals on. If I was going to sell it, I would wrap it around in place. I would put the E6000 down, give it some time to dry and then add the crystals as well. But it just depends on you know what you're doing with these tiaras because of course, uh, it, you know, these are for me, most of them. <laughs> um, another cool thing is like, I, like I said, I, I find a lot of pendants. So this is supposed to be a pendant, but if you turn this around, this height would be really dramatic. And of course there's all these circles. So these circles would be great for putting more crystals. Um, and also like we talked about, these are for me. So I just have a stash, a huge stash of like these crystals you get from um, Hobby Lobby, Michael's, wherever, jo Joanne's that I've been keeping forever. Um, but I also have Swarovski crystals as well that I use in, you know, I keep them in my little containers and they're different sizes and different colors. These are all flat back. Flat back makes it a lot easier to work with, um, but it's definitely preference for people. So another one, this is one I haven't used yet either. This is a cool one, it's another pendant. I'll wire it so that this is, goes like this, right here, like that. And I tend to like very geometric shapes, obviously. So I'll probably put something like this on top of it. Um, and then some kind of center, like either another crystal. This, let me change cameras, because it might be <clears throat> oh no, that's not going to work either. All right. So yeah, let me change back. That's <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I'll have the crystal in the center, the circle around it so that it gives it some kind of interest. Or I have all these really cool cabochons that are like natural pieces. There's some opals and things like that. So you give you an idea of what, what you can come up with. This too, will be an, a neat pendant, maybe have some tendrils kind of coming up around the outside. But this is kind of how I create. I just have a bunch of pieces always on my desk and I kind of mess around with them, you know, put different crystals down and different, if different pieces and see what I think works best. And then it, you know, kind of comes into shape. Like, um, these could easily be in every center of these pieces. You could just have crystals that were in all of them, or you could, you know, make that circle or have something behind it, paint all these leaves. There's just a lot of different things that you can do with these. And, and I like traditional tiaras, but I also like these different ones as well. Um, 
one tiara I didn't show that I just finished is this piece right here. And this started out as I wanted to do a book tiara. So these right here are actually pieces, book pages um, that I rolled. I thought about maybe adding like one of these purple crystals into that hole, but it just didn't work out for me. Um, and so then I actually made this bigger space so that I could add more flowers and then add the copper flowers. And then the pendant in the behind was just so striking. I had to add that. And this just kept getting taller and taller and taller until I just, I had to stop. But I really like this piece as well. Um, and this base right here, if you can see this black part, this is actually book pages that I've created this form for and glued that down and then glued the pieces on top of it so that this is a book form for this piece and i think it was like uh three layers of book and then a layer of cardstock and then it's wrapped around the bottom so you can just kind of see the print even my camera is not the best but you can see the print on there so can you guys see me it seems like it's on the nastic too I'm just talking. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so there you go. This is the idea for that. All right. People can't see me, right? I, I feel like I'm just talking into a void because of this. Yes, all right. I see people talking, so that's a good thing. Yes, I will. Um, and then finally, one of the things that I've done to make it easier for people who, whatever, okay, good, thank you. <laughs> whatever I do um, classes, people are always like, well, I don't even know where to start. Like you see me kind of coming up with these ideas as I go, but I've had these materials forever. So what I did and what I will have soon is this right here is an aluminum frame right here. So this piece that comes up and it's wired to one of the bottom pieces. So I created these aluminum frames so that people who wanted some place to start and not create everything from scratch would have something. This um, is a laser cut piece. So I will offer these relatively soon. I come, came up with like three or four different shapes and um, I just wired it on and then I glued down these pieces Thank you, Susan. Um, these pieces right here, these are all glued down. And then these crystals are all wired on. And then, of course, these are glued down. So this was a basic frame so that people can have some place to start. And it makes it a lot easier. So I got this one. I've got one that's more of a lotus shape. Um, and so I'll offer a little kit for people who want to do these. but just don't know where to start or don't have the hoard that some of us have because of course, like I said, <laughs> some of us are more um, dragon-like than ever. So yeah, it's, this is, these are most of them. I, one other tiara I'd like to show you because it's one of my favorites. Um, and I think I showed it a little bit earlier. This is a writing tiara. So it kind of shows you that you can pretty much use anything. So this piece, these are of course are pen nibs. And then this piece is one of these, another pendant like this that's folded over. Um, I've glued crystals to the front and then I actually used a little bit of glitter so that you get a better idea of what it looks like. And then these are just wired on beads. Of course, I think you're gonna see that a lot of my colors are very um, vibrant, like reds and greens and teals and blues. So this one was one of my favorites. Um, yes, and I do want to do that. Um, send out the kits before a con. Uh, I think actually there's been a couple of cons that have asked me for the kits too. So when we actually are able to do um, 
<laughs> in-person conventions again. Um, we, I might have some kits at some other conventions as well. So you can, even if I'm not able to make it, you'll still have a kind of a tiara base to start with. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat, I need to take a drink of water. So yeah, this is of course wired on, this is glued, this is glued on to here. And it's just really building up the shapes that you want to come through. Um, here, I think there's a moon piece that goes right in the center here too. Um, that's glued to this base. And then these are wire. It's like a thicker wire, like, like this. And that wire is then just shaped to, this is the shape right here. <laughs> um, this is just a piece that goes on this side. This is this wire right here. And so it's wired down on the sides and then the piece is wired in the center of it right there. So once the basic shape is put together, then I start adding all the stones. And I will, when I'm coming up with a concept, I will add the stones into my uh, pile um, for the piece. And then sometimes rework them depending on if I like the look or not, but uh, I've also, you know, we, there's there's so many things you can do with this. It's it's kind of as much as your imagination comes up with, or the tools you have. Um, these are, you know, resin molds that I've created, like little stars and and moons and things. And these are just basic um, pieces that I will probably drill a hole in and then attach to a head pin um, and then glue it on. But I, I, I do think that the, the Tiki tiara is the best example of that because these, with these pieces right here were created. There's a hole in the bottom where a piece of wire goes through so that I could wrap it just like any other component onto the base of the tiara. Um, these are built into the, um, piece. One of the drawbacks that I have learned, not just through this, but in general, is that when you're making things with polymer clay, of course, you have to bake them. And these cheap crystals are not the best to use <laughs> because they'll melt. And so in these ones, these two, they actually melted. There, it's a, it's a plastic uh, uh, piece. And so it melted into the uh, to the piece and it, it loses kind of its sparkle. So if, if you're gonna do something that has to be heated up, make sure your crystal actually can handle the heat. Um, but yeah, these, these acrylic flowers are all glued on. And then to symbolize the fire, I used um, uh, crystal points, which I use a lot. So, so yeah, this was, a, this was a fun one to do. So does anybody have any questions as I continue through this? No. Okay. Let me grab one more. Let me see where to go. Hmm. I guess I can can show. Where is it? Yes, Kathleen. It. The melted crystal definitely feels like a design thing. Um, I like that a lot. Uh, let me, I'm trying to find the one that I was going to show next and I don't see it. Okay, in terms of crystal wrapping, this is a question I get asked a lot. So these are crystal points and of course they have a hole drilled in them. Um, the best way to, you, you see a lot of these tiaras on like Etsy and things like that. The best way to do this is to wrap around the sides and go across and kind of try and make it, um, let me see if I, like an X shape across the top. I find though, if you don't, if they're still a little loose, you can take a plier, set of pliers 
And for me, it's a design feature as well, but let's see here. But you can actually tighten these pieces so that it gives a little extra interest, but it also tightens the wires so that that piece is then more sturdy as you put it in. So these, um, like this one's a little loose, I would just tighten this a little bit more and make sure the wire goes over the top of it so that you get this strength here. What's the weirdest, most unusual technique you've used? Um, for the one that I'm wearing, I'll take it off. I actually had, a mo this is my, like I said, I was talking about Dragon Horde. This is my Dragon Horde. Um, this one is my Dragon Tiara. And these pieces are all resin. Let's see if I can get that to, there it goes. Um, so these are all resin and they're, they're for an egg um, piece. And so I actually created UV resins um, and then I actually painted each individual one. So creating a bunch of these were, was probably the weirdest thing I did, but I haven't done anything like absolutely strange except Oh, oh yes, I did do the, it's not, a, it's not a weird technique. I did make a taco tiara for Taco Tuesdays and that was all paper. And so making tacos was kind of strange for me, but <laughs> it was a fun tiara to make as well. Stand up tiaras that stand straight on the head. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, I see a lot of the people who are like making them quickly using those twist ties. Um, I'm going to move back to because I did. Let me see. I've taken it apart loosely. This is an old one. So it's I've taken all the stuff and used it for other things. I used, a, like I said before, fabric bands are probably better for this. Um, I actually hot glued all of these sticks on. Um, so this hot glue worked better for this because the fabric will keep it in place. I spray painted the sticks, but I also see people using those twist, not twist ties, but the, um, what do you call those? The, the things that cable ties, I guess. See, like I said, this one's falling apart. Cable ties that then they use that for height, height as well. So that would be a good base to hang something off of. Um, but you, if, as long as you have something that you can put the actual other pieces on top, it makes it easier to create something vertically. <clears throat> but I do think if you're gonna do vertical, you need a bigger band than these small silver ones, <clears throat> unless it's really light. So I would recommend doing like a, I'm <clears throat> oh, sorry, like one of the cloth bands that you get for hair tuck, for you know, pulling your hair back. Um, and that would make it a lot easier and more sturdy <clears throat> as well. But this one, yeah, this one was falling apart. So that, that's what I would recommend. I haven't done a lot of height um, that doesn't come up. Because of course, my I, when you wear mine, they kind of wear like this instead of like that. Um, but you could use, I, I've had some people ask me to do those kind of more height pieces. So <clears throat> um, let me see one more TR. I'm going to. One second. <laughs> Another way to do a tiara that you don't necessarily, um, yeah. Another way to do a tiara that you don't necessarily want to start from scratch is another, this is a bought tiara. Um, that didn't, it had a little bit of color. I think these crystals were part of it, but there was nothing besides gold and a little bit of white. So I wired on all these extra pieces um, to give it some visual interest. And then I was thinking about actually painting the white stones and the green stones so that you get a more of a color coordination in terms of all the other crystals. Um, like I said, I use, I use a lot of alcohol ink, so this is one of the ways to do it. 
is just to buy something that has a lot of shape. Um, and then, uh, then actually wire everything on from there. And that, that makes an interesting TR because you could add anything you want <clears throat> to this and uh, get that interest. I, and I, I think it'd be also cool to do um, more like silver and gold and mix. I'm not, I'm not a big person that just keeps into one metal type. I kind of like a mixture of everything. And it makes it easier to create too because everything comes in a different finish. Um, I can just look at my desk and see all that. But you get you get an interesting thing. And I, I think this one probably needs something right in the center to really set it off. And so I do um, a lot of resin jewelry and like something like this would be cool, like so that you have this big piece that you could incorporate if I can get it to hold up um, on the top. This is not what I would use, but just this kind of um, bezel feeling would be really neat um, to kind of set off this piece. So it's a, it's a, it's, it's a fun, um, it's a fun thing to do with this, but like I said, there's 50 million different ways to create. So let me run through again, what the basics I use. I use these, <clears throat> these TR blanks, or I guess headband blanks. I use found pieces from Amazon, from, um, from Etsy a lot of times, from Michaels, from pretty much anywhere I can find. And I like pieces that have, that are pendants because the pendants tend to be more of a focal point. Uh, I do a lot of crystal points and I, I get the ones that are just brightly colored because I do like the bright colors. Um, these are not real crystals if you want to use real crystal. I mean, they are real crystals. They're just dyed crystals. Um, but something like this is just, I, I think the, the dyed crystals are really interesting on tiaras. Um, and you can get those in all different colors at, on pretty much everywhere. Um, and then I also use E6000, which is this stuff. E6000, I can get this at any craft store. You can see my tube is well used. And then of course, glue gun, always have my glue gun here. And um, the alcohol inks I use are just a Ranger ink. The other thing that these this company makes is a thing called the patinas. And I don't know. I don't have any here, but it's a patina. Sorry. So this is a patina that's for all metals and they have it in different colors. This is a Ranger. It's a vintage um, product and uh, you can wipe it on and then wipe it off. So if you do want to kind of match colors, um, you can use this kind of stuff to paint onto the metal. And I think I sold the one I did with this, so I can't show it, but um, you can paint it on and then you can wipe it off, you can sand it off, and it gives you a lot of different um, effects. So you can, you can definitely, like they have this in every color imaginable. So it's a nice thing. I also, like I said, I use a lot of resin um, and you can tint resin any color. I have tints of pigment powders and things like that. And so you can, you can pretty much color anything you want. Um, and what else do I use? I, I, just, I just use whatever I find really. I like these little guys. Um, they're like the, the beads without the holes. Sorry. These are useful to me too. Um, I really want somebody to make me a three-dimensional um, printed uh, octopus so I can make a tiara. So I have these, these like ornaments that I think would be really cool, but this is pretty heavy. So I think I need a printed one, but these are just painted. They got little universes on them. And I think it'd be really cool to just put it right on my head. 
And I know I've seen 3D printed um, headpieces that are octopus. So 3D printing definitely gives you any shape that you want. Um, and there's 50 million types of molds out there. So I think that's pretty much my tiara demonstration. If anybody has any other questions, I, um, I'm happy to answer them. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can show you. Oh, I was working on this. This is another thing. So this is, of course, um, <laughs> a polymer clay twig. So with polymer clay, you really don't, I, my pit clay is kind of gross. It's covered in glitter. And, and so I'm going to just sit here and I'm going to fire it and then actually paint it. But these, I was thinking about making a twig. If there's somebody on Constellation, yeah, Catherine, octopus tiara. Um, there's somebody on Constellation that actually has done polymer clay um, tiaras and they're really cool. And so I was like, oh, I don't wanna copy their ideas, but coming up with something similar, I thought it'd be cool to have these different shapes and I can show you the octopus tiara that I made, which is more tentacle related. But this is um, this one's paper, so you've got the shapes of the tentacles, and this is a metallic paper, and then these crystals in the front. Um, this is also wire wrapped. And of course, got some pearls on the side. But these tentacles I used before, obviously this one got a little bent um, for another piece that I was doing. And I thought these are really cool to use in a tiara. My cat wants to come inside. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, this is a fun, um, this is a fun way to create the height and dra drama. And then I added crystals all along here. And then I actually ran out of crystals. So then I used a little bit of glitter glue to emulate the crystals around it. So it gives you more <clears throat> interest on there. And it kind of emulates the actual octopus. So this is one of them. I, I like this one. This is one of my favorite. Actually, I, at some point, I've been a little busy but I was going to make these as templates so you could actually create your own tentacle tiara and then have them as either a cricket. Um, you know, <laughs> my cat, he's very sad. He wants to come inside so bad. Um, make it a cricket uh, file. So if you wanted to print them on your cricket or if you just wanted to cut them out yourself, these, you can see the back. Um, you see the lines, I've bent the shape for, um, to give some more dimension. You can see it kind of gives it a little bit more um, three dimensional aspect to it. So, so these are fun. Yeah, and it's just, just like a, a thicker cardstock. You wouldn't want to use a regular size one. I will definitely do a tiara template. So there you go. Um, but, but these are all just glued on. You can't really see. Um, it's just glued onto the bottom and then the, all of the, so what I did was I wired all the front on and then I wired or I glued this back on the bends and the, along the curve. Um, so these, because the wire is pretty flexible, it bends pretty easily. Um, the, of course the paper is just bent. So, so the curves, um, for pieces that have like this. These, these are bent to the shape of the, um, of the wire. And so then they're attached that way. But most things can just be attached. I did, um, when I was creating the piece for, cons or for Glasgow, um, I used this piece and I thought, oh, I can bend it. And I tried to hammer it. Um, <laughs> I tried to hammer it and it just snapped. Uh, Kathleen, I don't have a YouTube channel. I should have a YouTube channel. Well, I do, it doesn't have any tiara stuff on it. So um, it's got, it's got, 
the only thing on my TRN channel or my YouTube channel is my HD TV show from oh gosh, 20 years ago. <laughs> so it's not unless you want to see me making um <laughs> uh, uh paper pigs. Um yeah, no, not paper pigs. They were they were clay pigs. That's that's about all that's there. Um, but anyway, this this snaps. So you got to be careful with some of your materials because this definitely does not break, although or does not bend. But you probably heat it up, or I took the pieces and made it into multiple pieces so that then I got this different shape, which was a really cool, um, cool effect. And yes, definitely explore your hoard because that's how all of these TRs started. Like the, the, the writer tiara, I was like, oh, these pen nibs are really cool. I'm gonna start that. The octopus tiara was like, oh, I, I've made these tentacles before. How can I incorporate this into a tiara? The uh, dragon one was, oh, I'm making these cool dragon eggs because I do that as well. And how can I make a tiara that would incorporate the dragons as well? Or, you know, it's just everything is like, oh, I really want to do a book tiara. And I, how do I incorporate pages into the piece? Or I just have this really cool piece and I think, okay, how do I build on this piece itself? Um, a lot of times it'll just be me going to the craft store and finding one simple thing and then coming home and trying to build with the things that I have. Um, I will, when we're done with this, I will go into the, um, the Discord and add some of the links in there um, if you don't want to email me, but there's a place on Etsy that I really like that has all of these bigger metal pieces that I'm always inspired by what they have there. And so, you know, just having something like this to start with and then using everything in your hoard, it just, it, it makes it everything open up to this really interesting um, tiara and something that's very unique. You're not gonna see these tiaras everywhere. Um, yeah, so how do I travel with my tiaras? So these, I usually have boxes that are about the same size as these, but they're really lightweight. They're easy to wrap. Um, and a lot of the TRs that you buy online come with little boxes. So I can put like four tiaras in one box. I don't have to have it individually wrapped. Um, and so that that's how I do it. You know what, uh, AJ, a good idea for scales, what I did one of the TRs that I sold I made wings and I made them out of foam, craft foam. Um, and you know, when you use craft foam, I don't have any sitting around here, you can actually draw the outside and then come through with pen and make the scales and then paint it. And, um, and then it gives it that shape. And I, I made wings. So I painted over it a couple times, but you could also like with that craft foam is if you got a stamp, you could stamp, you could heat it up a little bit and stamp into it and you get that shape as well. So you don't actually have to um, draw every individual scales. It depends on how much elaborate, you know, what you have in your house, but the craft foam works really well because it does keep that shape. You can also mold it onto a shape and you don't have to um, worry about like, it's so lightweight you're not gonna add a bunch of um, extra stuff to your head um, and that's that's it. So I that would be, I think would be a really cool way to do scales. Like these, these ones, these scales are, like I said, UV resin in a mold um, and you could do it that way as well. But uh, I think, I think making, making scales out of craft home would be really cool too. And yes, Constance, you go to the craft store, but that's 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 the craft store, right? You never just come out of the craft store with one thing. <laughs> There's always more stuff that you're like, oh, look at that. Oh, I don't have that. Oh, I don't have that color of this. So yeah, that's that's a pretty much a craft store for me. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I spend a lot of money in the craft store. So um, all right, so I'm going to go over to the chat, and like I said, if you want to email me, it's uh, sillysarasu at gmail, and I will answer any questions. I have people already asking me questions um, from other tiara demonstrations I've done, and I, I just really like to help people create things that are make them happy, so um, yeah.
I, I think that's it. So thank you very much for joining me. And hopefully, even if you just email me a picture of your tiara, that will make me happy. So I will see you guys later. <laughs>